Oh good, there's no smoke alarm in here. It's a metaphor for uh, YouTubers who are about to go extinguished. I should have said extinct. Don't you mean extinct? Damn, that would have fit better with the theme. Oh, I'm gonna need that. Yay, another video about copper. Fantastic. So this is a little bit different to the normal videos that I would be doing. Um, just because the subject we're talking about isn't fun, it isn't dinosaur related, uh, but it needs to be done. Because if people, if content creators like myself didn't chirp up about it, um, it, we wouldn't, uh, nothing would change. So, copper, you've probably heard or seen a lot of content creators talk about it on Twitter or YouTube. In fact, um, the first one that came to my attention uh, who brought it up was Chatronic. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna basic, I'm gonna break down what copper is in layman's terms so that you understand it as much as I understand it um, and how that's gonna affect my channel probably everyone else on the platform and how we are going to, from January 2020, uh, how this may be affecting us and how my, me, myself, I'm gonna go forward with the channel. So first off, what is COPPER? COPPER stands for the Child Online Privacy Protection Act. Uh, it's been a law for a long time, so this isn't just a recent thing. However, it was supposed to be renewed in 2022, but due to uh, protest groups wanting it to be reevaluated sooner, uh, that's why it's happening in 2020. But to really understand why it exists, there's a lovely story about Facebook and YouTube. So whenever you go on Facebook, for instance, uh, you'll see adverts, you'll see videos. You might not even see things that you're necessarily liked or want to see. Facebook has an algorithm, like YouTube does, that <laughs> it's quite dark actually when you think about it. They want you to stay on their page as long as possible. So they find exactly like how your mouse moves, what things you click on, what things you watch, so that when you're on Facebook, you stay on there as long as possible. Now, YouTube has a similar thing. Now, every time you watch a video, they collect like data on your profile, what you're watching. And unfortunately, they collected data on children. I don't know exactly how they did it, because to be on YouTube, you have to have an account. You have to say you're older than 13. But either way, we know that kids watch YouTube. And YouTube knows that kids watch YouTube. Um, and when they were collecting data on this, they would package that data, sell it off to advertisement agencies, in this case, Mattel, Hasbro. And then they would take that information and target adverts towards users that would be watching kids' content, basically. According to the federal government, and I'm sure depending on what, where you are in the world, your government might have similar laws against this. This is why you can't advertise to children, because children, or under the law, cannot discern between what's real, like what's, fan what's fiction, and what's reality. So what's an advert and what's real. When you see uh, a plane flying through all these different countries and it looks amazing and it's not actually what a flight's like, the child might see that as, oh wow, that's real. Either way, that's not the point. And YouTube got fined from the federal government, the US federal government, for breaking copper because they collected that data which they should not have. So they were, they settled, I think, for $170 million. And then this is where it gets a bit <sighs> really frustrating. Now, YouTube child-directed content on their platform, they don't want that anymore, basically. The one end you have the the copper, like child-friendly coming in, the other end you've got, it's too graphic, it's too gory, and in the gray area in the middle, is, because it is a great area, is where you can make content now. And Copper have put forth a legislation saying what content you can create and what falls under targeted kids and what doesn't. This legislation or this document was incredibly vague. But first I wanna talk about what happens when you label your content created for kids. And this is something everyone's gonna have to do who's a content creator online. You have a little checky box. You can have your either your channel as content created for kids or not suitable for kids, or you can do it by a video, vi video by video basis, which is probably what the majority are gonna do, if at all. Well, they kind of have to. So your video will have no notifications. 
your video will have no comments, your video will not be searchable, and this is coming from Chadtronic who spoke to a contact at YouTube. The video will not be suggested or recommended, and the video will make 90% less revenue because it won't have targeted ads. And that is where YouTube makes a lot of its money. They sell advertising slots to advertisers. And this isn't going forward, all those videos here and out. No, this applies to previous videos. So if you're a channel like mine, who has over 2000 videos, I'm gonna have to go through every video and check whether or not I think it's made for kids or not made for kids. So you might be thinking, well, why don't I just put all of my content as not targeted to kids? Because why would you not do that? Because if you put it to kids, you're gonna get no money and there's literally no point making content online unless for the love of it. But if this is your job, you kind of need to have a balance. Because the FTC, um, there's a conference and you can see the whole thing. I'll put a link in the description below and I'll probably put a snippet now. They said, We have a variety of tools at our disposal to cull through those 23 million channels and, and, and in an expeditious way. So when we talk about aggressiveness, we are typically talking about civil penalties. Not only can we sue Google and YouTube for compliance with COPPA, but also individual channel owners and content creators. Which means that even though YouTube is trying to facilitate you marking your content, whether to kids or not to kids, uh, the FTC have their own algorithm, own system to check through all the videos that are put as not aimed for kids and double check it. And supposedly, if you are in breach of that, they find they themselves, not what you say, they themselves find your content targeted to kids when you put it not targeted to kids, you will be fined up to $42,000 per video. Yes. And if you want to contest it, you will have to go to a court, which is of course going to cost money to even do so. If you win, I'm assuming they will pay the fees, but at the same time, I've seen other responses of people saying that we as content creators shouldn't be scared of violating copper because we technically don't. We're not the ones gathering information on children, that's YouTube. Where this is true, we are also uploading content to YouTube, and if we do not mark our videos correctly, then that's when we face compliant issues, and compliance issues is the $42,000 fine. So what does the FTC, not YouTube, think child content is? Let's have a look, shall we? And this is where we get into what has caused panic. So they put a document out, subject matter that is appealing to children. And as an example, kids jokes, music, kids games, video computer games, I love video computer games, children's TV shows or stars, cartoon characters, sports, stories, toys, children's books, fantasy, children's arts and crafts, pets, products primarily purchased or consumed by children like snacks, food or cereal. Pretty much everything. Food, sports, stories, pets. This is just the, the tip of the iceberg. Uh, language, so if slang and pop culture references. So uh, stuff like fun, free stuff, whatever, cool, duh, games, ask your parents. Stuff that, for one, you haven't said since the 90s. Oh, that's cool. I say that all the time. Like, it's not like I'm trying to target towards children. And herein lies the problem that this legislation and the law really needs revising. Why it does. They go into a little detail saying the age of models portrayed on the website using children as models. So if you, the one thing that I've taken from this is basically if you have a kid presenting video games, toys, yeah, that's probably gonna be caught. There's no way you can contest that because having a child in your videos, you can't argue it's aimed at adults. And if you do, it's not aimed at the right adults. Audio content appealing to children, e.g. simple or popular tunes or songs, cartoon voices, childlike noises, and sound effects. So as you can see, this is horrendous. It is so vague, literally anything that is on YouTube can be caught. There's people who make arts and crafts. They are worried because they take 
children's toys, change them, or even just art and craft in general, that's something that kids do. Even in this document they mention about bright colors, which if you're if you're on YouTube, you know that you need to have bright colors in order. I mean, look, if you look at the right or left, wherever it is, look at that tab, look, look at the suggested videos. How many of those videos have bright colors in them? Probably a lot of them. Well, how do they? Because it doesn't matter whether I say it, it doesn't matter whether YouTube thinks it. It's up to the FTC whether they think that that is targeted at kids. If it's cartoon characters drawn in the thumbnail, if it's an animation. And, th and that's the problem. We've got people from the FTC who don't understand the new popular culture. They're still stuck. Their kids were, you know, from the 80s and 90s. So that's that's not what they're all about. Whereas kids nowadays are completely different. So where does this leave me in in this big mess? You've seen, you've probably seen YouTubers who have said, well, this is the end of my channel. I, I can't continue with this anymore. Is this the end of blah, 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 insert channel name for clicks? <laughs> Which is probably what I've done as well. Let's come on, we got to play the system. And luckily, um, like, even though I do YouTube full time, I, I have my degree to fall back on. There's certain videos in the not too distant future that I was hoping to make, but now I don't know if I can do. So what, is, what does this mean for this channel in particular? Because we cover dinosaurs, we cover animals. Kids like those things. So if I want to make a Jurassic World the game video or a Planet Zoo video, is Copper gonna claim those? Answer, I don't know. Scarily, I don't know. One ray of hope, however, a couple of days ago, Christine S. Wilson, who is a commissioner at the FTC, uh, has put out a post on Twitter. And I quote, I appreciate the input I've received via Twitter about copper and the hashtag YouTube matter. I do hope that content creators will give the FTC their feedback in the context of our hashtag copper rulemaking. Comments can be submitted throughout December 9th at the link below. And I will put that in the link in the description of this very video. So you guys and myself can have our words heard. Really urge you, if you are going to comment or submit your views, do it in a way that's professional, that doesn't slander or call out people because they will instantly look at that and not take it seriously. They'll be, oh, these are just some internet memers. Right, trolls, we'll, we'll ignore that comment. So if you really, really do appreciate the work that us as content creators, or even, you know, the content that you want to see, uh, and you don't want to see that go away, I'd urge you to leave a comment on that website. Or even in this video, or hashtag copper, it does seem like there are a few people at the FTC searching through the hashtag, looking at not only the content creators are making, but generally audiences are making. And it hopefully looks like it's gonna get revised or possibly even pushed back. That would be so, so good. I mean, there is so much to talk about when it comes to this, but I do not want to make a 50 minute video on this. I think at this point, you have understood the context of copper. At the moment, if it goes into legislation in its current state, it is going to significantly affect myself and everybody else on the platform. At the moment, we've got to prepare for the worst. So what does this mean for the gaming beaver? I mean, right out the gate, there's certain things that are no longer going to be on the channel. So for instance, toy unboxings. And I know there's a lot of channels on YouTube like Victoria's Cantina, Jura sorry, Jurassic Collectible, Ted Brothers. You know, th these are channels that either unbox toys or do repaints um, and change, like modify them. But because when you boil down to it, it is a toy, Copper could see that or the FTC could see that and think this is a toy and rightfully so, it's a toy aimed at children, but it's being transformed into different content. They might not see it that way though. So going forward, if it is still as vague when it goes into legislation, I can no longer do unboxings, um, which is a shame because we've had some really good ones and we've got, you know, uh, aquatic reptiles coming out or have even already come out. This guy, the Toast Plushie. Amazing, beautiful. I hear you say you've already got 20. You've already, you've already made this video child friendly now. You realize that this is your fault. I don't know if I could argue that this isn't targeted towards children. 
for instance. Even though, and, and that's the problem because the FTC don't understand that there are adult collectors of all sorts, like amiibos, uh, like vintage toys, like, you know, the Jurassic Park line and stuff like that. Like again, I've said out of the sheer vagueness, I don't know if I could have something like this or have it the subject of the video in there at all. And it's driving a huge wedge between the content creator and their audience if they have to suddenly switch it up. Stuff like the aisle, um, I think I could still keep going with. I don't think, like the aisle for one has gore in it, uh, violence, so I don't think that you can specifically say that that in particular is targeted towards kids. And the FTC is actually starting to make a discernible difference between content that is targeted specifically towards kids and content that can catch that sort of range. I think they're starting to realize that now. Jurassic World Alive has now added the, the goat that you feed to your dinosaurs, it gets ripped apart now. So that's good. I'm, I'm glad for that. They're actually helping. Uh, but generally, and I know a lot of people think that I've censored myself. And if you go on my bro gaming channel where I play with my friends, I swear a lot. But that's not because that's who I am. That's just, I don't know what I'm like with those guys. When I'm recording here and I'm having fun playing Planet Zoo, or playing another game, I'm not all of a sudden gonna start swearing because <laughs> why would I? I'm having fun. And when it comes to games like Minecraft, I have no idea. I have been on YouTube for eight or nine years, creating all sorts of content. Animations, sketches, toy unboxings, let's plays, and YouTube has been a place that has allowed me to grow, to meet so many amazing people and learn that for me anyway that there is a community f no matter who you are what you're interested in it's let me grow it's let me accept <laughs> that i am a dinosaur nerd and that that's okay i used to struggle with social anxiety and through YouTube, opportunities that I've been given because of that, I've been able to come out my shell. I've become so much happier with who I am. And now to think that everything that's happened and the opportunities and the reasons why those things have happened is going to be taken away because I can't do the things I enjoy anymore because dinosaurs have a huge overlap with children or animals for instance, and that if I want to cover dinosaurs or animals in the future, maybe I need to join, you know, I need to make documentaries, or I need to I need to be the next David Attenborough in order to do it, which is impossible. You cannot replace David Attenborough. If anything is to come of this video, I just want to raise awareness um, of copper so that you guys maybe who didn't know what it was, now do. You, um, again, you can have your say, you can find all the links in the description below. And even though for me, I don't feel like it's going to particularly impact me too hard. For a lot of other people, this, uh, who just do the unboxings, that's, it's the end for their YouTube revenue, or they will have to change what they do. It goes against everything that YouTube is. A place where you can have a passion and turn that into a career. And it's a shame that we're going to lose that. In closing, FTC, very bad, might be changed. If it is not, from January onwards, content may change. Some things that you like may not be there anymore. And that's pretty much it. I just want to make sure that you guys sort of got a gist of it. And that's it. So I will keep on doing what I'm doing. If anything outstanding happens, maybe we'll do a follow-up video on that. But uh, yeah, I just want to say if anybody is worried about me, I will try not to go anywhere. I really will, but it is out of my hands. It's not even a YouTube thing, which to be fair, it started because of them. This is a law. This isn't just, oh, you know, we can't we'll avoid that. And with the threat of having $42,000 per video, you know, thrust upon you, and I have 2.5 thousand videos, we're almost talking a billion. I could be, like, if every video fell under that category, I, be, I could be sued for a billion dollars. Then I, I I don't know. I, I don't have a billion dollars, would you believe? But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. It's a scary situation. Everybody who's on YouTube, who is making a living off YouTube, uh, will be feeling this stress about it. And um, they all deserve um, your support um, and encouragement. And if you can share this, um, 
and talk about it. I think that's the most important thing you can do is talk about it. Get the conversation going, get the conversation flowing and uh, maybe we can act some change on this. Good news, it does seem like they're actually listening to that conversation. So hopefully it won't be as bad and videos that are affected by this really are the Elsa ones, are the Peppa Pig ones, not the people who work hard, who don't specifically target children. And that's the problem. You take all that content away and say, okay, be mature, Kids are gonna watch it anyway. And there's gonna be an influx of content that kids really shouldn't be watching, swearing, and maybe more violent games or something like that. And uh, really, it boils down to people just want to be themselves. But anyway guys, thanks for listening, and um, I'll see you in a better video. Bye-bye. <laughs>